to your name. Praise God. Welcome, Tanya Smith, Eddie Field. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Welcome, welcome. The conference is in question and answer mode. The conference will begin when the next party joins. Hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah. Give a few more minutes. Here's some more. Come on. Hallelujah. Magnify the Holy Spirit. Magnify the Holy Spirit. And You ready to walk with me on this journey as we study the Word of God together? We have to get the flesh out of the way. Amen. The spiritual God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and glorify God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to give a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To crucify the flesh, magnify the Holy Spirit. Help me sing it. You are Hallelujah. You say, I'm in my own place. But we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the flesh. Get the flesh out of the way. Let's get in the Word of God. Good to see you, Miss Tanya Smith. Praise God. I love those pictures that you're posting of you and your lovely family. Good to see you, Eddie Fields, on tonight. To God be the glory. Magnify the Holy Spirit and glorify. I hope you have your Bible. <laughs> Come on and walk with me. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise to be among the living this, this evening. Hallelujah. So many have gone on to be with the Lord, we hope. Hallelujah. And uh, so I got calls today. People they went out to eat and got stomach viruses. So we're going to be praying for those who are dealing with stomach viruses. I tell you, I went out with a bunch of ladies on Sunday and I too felt a little funny, a little queasy in my stomach. I said, we got to be careful where we go and just pray, you know. There's a plague in the land and we have to pray for one another. This is a praying time. Hallelujah. I believe it's a praying time for one another. We got to pray for one another. Hallelujah. We have to make our election sure we have to know who we are in christ amen we must know in this season i would encourage you to read revelations chapter one through six hallelujah tell you what's going on and i just want to say thank you thank you for all of you who gave for my birthday who took this me out hallelujah who took me out for my birthday and I tell you, I, I tell you one thing about Southerners, we love to eat. We love to eat, hallelujah. I tell you, um, it started Wednesday, March the 1st, and <laughs> I went out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 
and I'm going out tomorrow. God, I mean, you all are so wonderful. So wonderful. Brittany. Oh, Brittany, how are you doing? Good to see you. Pastor Chestnut, thank you for tuning in. Lord, I met Sister Br uh, Brittany down in Durham when I was down at the getting radiation. I met her there. You know, you meet a lot of good people, Christian people. You don't even know. You don't have to say everything. You just be kind. No matter what you're going through, no matter what it looks like, just be kind. I tell you, some people are not kind and people taking care of, of them. I tell you, you better, <laughs> you better be kind. And she was so kind. So thank you so much for tuning in to tonight, uh, Brittany. And blessings to you and your lovely family. She got a beautiful family. Hallelujah. And I thank God for her tuning in tonight. I don't take for granted your time. Hallelujah. But give me one minute. I'm a little hot. I got to cut the air conditioning. I'm, you know, as you get older. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you are welcome here in this place. Just studying the word of God. I hope you have your Bibles tonight. We're going to study the word of God. As you know, the ones that have been following me and, and have come to the church, you know, you know that I'm a teacher. I preach. The Holy Spirit takes over because he gets all the glory, all the honor Jesus Christ does. And he works through us. We just have to be available vessels, being willing to be used by him. So I just thank God. I humble myself and come before you ready to study the word of God because it's so important to renew our minds through the word of God so we can go from glory to glory to glory. It's one thing to get saved. That's the beginning of it. But then we have to mature, be determined to mature in the things of God. And sometimes it gets tight. I say it gets tight. It gets challenging on this journey. Things that come down the pipe, so to speak, is can make us sit down, but are we solidified in God? Are we determined to be steadfast, unmovable, abounding in Him? No matter what it looks like, no matter what we're going through. And I've said that many times, and, times, and that, that's been tested. Hallelujah. But I thank God that He has given me, the, He's a, a, a God of grace and mercy, and that He's given me the strength to be diligent, to be persistent and consistent in the things of God. So I'm grateful to God for all of you. I thank God for Brittany being on. You know, I met her. I would, I would uh, check in. I remember when she started the job, and she was, well, not necessarily started, but I knew she was new. She was being trained. And I just thank God for her kindness that she showed. Got a beautiful little girl and a wonderful family and there. And I just thank God for meeting her. Hallelujah. So let's pray and let's get in the word of God. And I thank God for Sister Cheryl being on the line from New Jersey. Hallelujah. And so many others. Thank you so much for tuning in. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. I thank you, God, for another opportunity to study the word of God with your people. Lord, you tell us in 2 Timothy 2.15 to study, to show thyself approved, a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, you're interested in building a relationship one with another. Uh, build a relationship with us, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the vision, hallelujah, that you've given us, God. 2 Timothy 2.15 to study, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Father, I pray that you look over every family. Protect them, God, from any hurt, harm, or danger. The ones that's dealing with stomach viruses from going out to eat, God, and they found themselves vomiting and diarrhea and going through so many changes. I ask God for a speedy recovery over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for the young people, God. It's so many challenges for the young people. God, I pray that the angels of the Lord encamp around about them, leading and guiding their parents and protecting them, God, as only you can. You are our protection. You are our refuge. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. Now, Lord, you said in your word in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge you, and you promised, God, that you would direct thy path. 
Lord, I need your direction. Less of me and all of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I say amen. All right, turn your Bibles, hallelujah, to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. To God be the glory. I love you too, Miss Brittany. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm excited. I get excited when I see someone that I've met that's been so kind. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And I, 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 this is a sidebar. Just be patient with it, Pastor Charlene. I can remember her talking about her family and how they get together at Christmas. And she talked about her grandmother. And, and, and it just seemed like a wonderful, close-knit family. You know, family is important. Hallelujah. So that told me a lot about her. She probably didn't remember, think I remember that, but I listened very intently, hallelujah. I guess that comes with being in the counseling field for a while. You have to listen and observe and watch, amen? So you can be a help. But, but you know, all of my help coming from the Lord and the Holy Spirit leading guide me in everything I do, hallelujah. I, I strive to, to be, be that way with him, allow him to lead and guide me. Hallelujah. Just pray for me tonight. I'm a little tired. Hallelujah. But you know what? It's all right. Because when you get started, God, he does what he do. Amen. To God be the glory. So Romans 12, starting at verse 1, the topic of discussion tonight, renewing our minds as Christians is the key to the kingdom. You say, Pastor, that's one of the keys to the kingdom, but that's one of the primary uh, 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 things that I think we should do. We should renew our minds. We should go from glory to glory to glory. The question to ponder tonight, do you really believe transformation is the key to the kingdom? Do you believe that transformation is the key to the kingdom? Well, I come by to tell you on this walk with God, we must become kingdom minded. Because mm -hmm. we'll get sidetracked if we <laughs> stay worldly minded, so to speak. And as I previously stated, the scripture reference is Romans 12, starting at verse 1, and I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship verse one beloved makes us aware that during paul's day they sacrificed animals according to god's law a priest would kill the animal and place it on the altar as as an offering to god but beloved sacrifice uh, was and is important even in the old testament god made it clear that obedience from the heart was much more important. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Psalms 40, I want you to walk with me on this journey tonight. I hope you have your Bibles. Turn to Psalms 40. Psalms 40, starting at verse 6. I'm going to give you a minute. And keep your hand and your fingers in Romans 12. Hallelujah. Psalms 40, starting at verse 6. Good afternoon, Pastor. Pastor Nicole Bradshaw. I pray that Bishop has a speedy recovery. Hallelujah. And your strength in the Lord. I know you a good godly woman taking care of him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 40, verse 6 puts it like it, this. It says, and I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings, offerings, and sin offerings you did not require. My sisters and brothers, David also makes us aware here that during his day, they sacrificed animals at the table. Excuse me, at the tabernacle. It was identified as religious ritual. Mm -hmm. David recognized that th these acts were meaningless and unless done for right reasons. So we can sacrifice all day long. But he said obedience is better than sacrifice. And Paul said back in, he, in his day, he recognized that these acts were meaningless unless done for right reasons. 
We have to do self-evaluation. We have to ask ourselves sometimes, why are we doing that? What motivates us? Mm -hmm. We today must observe and examine ourselves. In other words, going to church, taking communion, or paying tithes can all become empty rituals if we don't do these things for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. But things become habitual. We just do them. Hallelujah. And, and we should be joyful givers. You say, Pastor, what you talking about giving in the pandemic? You, you know why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We, we Christians, so we, we pray that we've been on this journey long enough that, you know, we, we, we listening, we listening to that still small voice when he prompts us to do a thing. David is saying here that, that God isn't impressed with our rituals, meaning our sacrifices and offerings. Hallelujah. He is moved by what? By our attitude uh -huh, of devotion to him. Our attitude in which we give. So he's moved by our attitude in which we give. Hallelujah. You have to prompt people to give. Give unto the Lord. Pay ye, uh, uh, bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me that I will not pour you out a blessing. That's all good. But we have to get to a place in our life on this journey with God that we build a relationship with him to where we, he, when he touches us with that still small voice and said, I need you to sow. Hallelujah. So he looks at our attitude of devotion to him. The attitude in which we give. So we didn't talk about David, Paul, and now Samuel. The prophet Samuel told Saul in 1 Samuel, turn there with me. Don't take my word for it. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. And I'm going to give you a minute. The prophet Samuel told Saul in 1 Samuel 15, 22. Good afternoon, Brother Greg. Good to see you. Awesome man of God. That's a preaching man of God. <laughs> a teacher, too. Hallelujah. The prophet. Well, I got some, lots of ministers, pastors. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I better get it right tonight. You know, these are these some seasoned saints. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the prophet Samuel told Saul in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, to obey is better than sacrifice. Meaning that who we are becoming, hallelujah, is always more important than what we're doing. Who we are becoming. So what that tells me, and I hope you, you're getting it, that we, we go from glory to glory. It's a process. So who we are becoming is always more important than what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So, beloved, this journey with God is a process, but we examine ourselves and, and, and when we examine ourselves, and, and, must, and we must make sure, hallelujah, that we are giving God his rightful place in our heart. And then whatever we do will be a beautiful, hallelujah, result of our, of our love for him. Mm -hmm. We will come to the realization that God owns everything. I know I did. Hallelujah. And we will build such a relationship with him that when he tells us to do a thing, we will do it. Why? Because why? We trust him. I tell you, as you grow in, this, in your relationship with God, you learn to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Certain things that come down the pipe, he will, the Holy Spirit will remind you what God has already done for you. Hallelujah. That's why we have to be consistent and persistent in the things of God. Jesus is a wonderful example of giving God his rightful place in his heart. This is what he says in verse 7 through 8 of Psalms 40. If you're not there, turn to Psalms 40, hallelujah. Verse 7 through 8. And this is Jesus talking. This is what he said. He's a, the prime example of giving God his rightful place. Psalm 40, starting at verse 7. Then I said, here am I. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Verse 8. I desire, listen to me, I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. Sound like a heart thing to me. Hallelujah. Jesus the Christ betrayed, hallelujah, this attitude of obeying and serving God. 
He portrayed the attitude. Remember I told you it's about an attitude and gift. So he portrayed the attitude of obeying and serving God. So in this generation, beloved, we do not offer animals, but it's clear that God wants us to offer what? Ourselves as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He wants us to uh, uh, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Meaning laying aside our own desires to follow him. Putting all our energy and resources at his disposal. And trusting him to guide us. Hallelujah. Are you willing to go through the process? Are you willing to renew your mind? Do you really believe that transformation, it takes transformation uh, uh, inwardly, spiritually, on this journey with God? That, is that an a example of being kingdom minded? Help me, Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers, we should do this out of gratitude, hallelujah, that our sins have been forgiven. And if we believe that God sent his only begotten son out of, out of love for us, uh huh, John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved the, oh, hallelujah, help me, Lord. <laughs> I got to take myself a little bit slower now. I get excited. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Hallelujah. So if we believe that God sent his only begotten son out of love for us, do we really believe it? We must get to a place on this journey with him that we realize that, ha that God has good, pleasing, and perfect plans for his children. Are you his child? Mm -hmm. Are you his child? He wants us to be transformed a people with renewed minds living to honor and obey him and to serve others in the name of Jesus. You can serve a person just by being kind to them. They might be rude, to, uh, rude, but they might be going through something, and you come along and you just bless their lives. I remember Monday I had to go to the doctor, and I was just feeling some kind of, I was feeling heavy. I wasn't feeling myself. But the lady who greeted me, hallelujah, and it was time to take my weight and my height, hallelujah, she had me laughing. I said, well, don't tell me uh, 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 how, much, how much I weigh. Let me turn my head, you know, because I'm on this medication and I don't want to know. She said, well, it's all right. Just take your shoes off. That'll take a few pounds off. I said, yeah, there you go. And then she said, well, don't put your shoes back on because we got to get your height. I said, okay. And she made me laugh. So, you know, we can serve others by with our attitude, hallelujah, by being kind, hallelujah. So my brothers and my sisters, because we, we, we want only what is best for us, and he gave his son to make our new life possible, amen? He wants the best for us, excuse me, not we want the best, he wants the best for us. <laughs> and, and he gave his only begotten son to make our new life possible, amen? We should joyfully give ourselves as living sacrifices in his service. Amen. If you believe it, say amen. So I want to encourage you, hallelujah, to ask God to help you in your weakness and to trust him to do just that. If you have a weakness, we all do. I see the halos over your, your head. Pastor Thomas always used to say that. I see the halos over your head. You got it all together, but I don't. <laughs> God will help us in our weakness if we determine to be consistent and persistent in him. It will require kingdom-minded thinking. And that is accomplished when our minds are renewed through the word of God. We have to get in the word of God. God is interested in building a relationship with you. He's interested in building a one-on-one -on -one relationship with me. Now, let's take a look at Amos, hallelujah. What does Amos have to say about renewing our minds? We didn't look at Paul in Romans, hallelujah. We didn't look at David. And now, let's look at Amos. Amos 5, turn to Amos. You got to walk with me now. He's interested in building a relationship with you. Uh-huh. Amos 5. Whoo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 21 through 24. And this is talking about uh, false worship. Uh-oh, here we go. 
talking about relates to false worship, and yes, giving is a way of worshiping God. Yeah, giving is a way of worshiping God. Do you believe it? Amos 5, verse 21 through 24, and I'm reading from the New International Version. And it reads as thus. It said, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are, are, are a snitch to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring sure fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Verse 23, away with the noise of your songs. He said, he said, I will not listen to the music of your heart, but let justice, hallelujah, roll on like a river, righteous like a never failing stream. Mm, don't sound like Amos is too ha happy. Amos is making us aware that God hates false worship, meaning religious festivals and assemblies uh -huh, by people who go through the motion out of pretense are for show. You got some people that show up in church and do things for pretense and show, but not live in anything. It's important to renew our minds through the word of God. In other words, if we're living sinful lives and using religious activities uh -huh, and traditions to make ourselves look good, mm -hmm, God will despise our worship and, and will not accept what we offer. Let me say it again. God will despise our worship, according to Amos, hallelujah, not Pastor Charlene, according to Amos, uh-huh, will despise our worship and will not accept what we offer. Beloved, he wants sincere hearts, not words of praise of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. He requires righteousness and justice. Justice where, is where all people are treated fairly without regard to social worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we want to, God, he knows, he knows already. He said, in other words, what comes to my mind, he will spew, spew them out of, out of his mouth, you know, because they're not sincere. They just come for outer appearance like hypocrites pretending to be. He said, in other words, be quiet. I don't want to hear it. Mm, I don't want God to say that about me. I want to build a relationship with him. I want to renew my mind so I won't be worldly. I won't be worldly just going to church, going through the motion. Although we're not, a lot of us not haven't gone back to church yet. Hallelujah. Verse 2 of Romans 12. Go back to Romans 12. Verse 2, hallelujah. Of Romans 12. It says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer. I'm reading from the Amplified, any longer with its superficial customs, meaning shallow and phony values and customs, but be transformed and progressively, mm -hmm, that means growing, not just standing stagnant, but growing progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing, we talk about kingdom living now, <laughs> By renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical, meaning moral, attitudes. There, there's that word again, attitude. By our attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for, your, for you. I'm going to stop for a minute and give you a testimony. I was at Love and Faith Christian Fellowship for 15 years. And I would listen to Pastor Thomas. Someone told me about him uh, years ago. And I've been gone a long time because I moved to Charlotte. But one thing I never forget when I decided to go, and he was doing a message on no matter what you've gone through, no matter how your mother conceived you, no matter what, God has a specific purpose for you. And I can remember, I know it's the Holy Spirit now. It drew me in. I said, Lord, it had been an easy road. So God has a purpose for me. And I had a desire to want to know this God and what his purpose was for me in my life. So that's what drew me. Teaching is so vital because it causes us to want to study the word of God. It should. 
And as we grow and see what God does in our life, hallelujah. And you know, I thank God, not every day, but I thank God right now for Pastor Thomas and his obedience to God, which caused me to be healed in some areas of my life. He encouraged me, my, you know, and, and uh, I remember when uh, I wrote the book, A Journey Into Wholeness, hallelujah, and he said to me as my leader, and I do it to this day, he said, every place you go to speak, hallelujah, and believe it or not, since I've been back from Duke, after having the surgery and whatnot, uh, I um, was called to come to, to Danville, Virginia, and I did it there. He said, everywhere you go, he said, plant that book. In the, in, the, in the lady's life, the first lady's life, and that stuck with me. But that's, what I be, that's when I began to learn about purpose, and I began to talk to God, what is my purpose? And I tell you, on this journey with God, when God show you your purpose, the vision, you have to be diligent, you have to be consistent, you have to be determined that your mind is going to be renewed through the word of God, because the enemy, he comes he come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We have to have the word of God hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against him, but we can stand steadfast, unmovable, abounding in him. Hallelujah. So some bishops, pastors, teachers that you uh, may sit up under, it'll take root in your life. And you begin to get in the word of God yourself. See him teaching that way made me want to get in the word of God myself. Amen. And then encouraging you to do what thus saith the Lord. So, uh, so verse 2, Paul warns Christians about following uh, the selfish and corrupt pattern of this fallen world. So Paul, he, he, he's giving the other end of the spectrum, so to speak. As we are aware, many Christians wisely decide that a large portion of the world's behavior is off limits for them, mm -hmm. meaning refusal to conform to this world. So we're Christian. We, we're not doing the, the, some of the things we determined we're not going to do, some of the things that we used to do. We didn't put it off. However, doing my studies, <laughs> I learned that Paul, he made me aware that it must go much deeper than just behavior and customs. You say, well, we got to start somewhere. You're absolutely right. He is saying here that it must be firmly planted in the values rooted in our minds. And what the enemy comes? He comes to attack our minds. So we have to put on the whole, I love this, put on the whole arm of God. Ephesians 6, that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And he said, above all, taking the shield of faith, where, when them fiery dots come up, you can block them. Hallelujah. Because you got the whole arm of God on. That's a whole nother message. Let me keep going. <laughs> but he said, we must be firmly planted in the values rooted in our mind. In other words, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Paul is saying it's possible, it is possible, however, we must avoid, these are the things we must avoid, being proud, selfish, greedy, and arrogant. Mm -hmm. My sisters and my brothers, it is only when, guess what, it's only when the Holy Spirit renews, re-educates, and redirects our minds are we truly transformed. So God is such a wonderful God. He's such a good God that he gives up. He told his disciples over 2,000 years ago. He said, I must go away, my, my brothers and sisters. He said, but I'm going to leave you a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide you in all truth. So we have to be uh, 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 re-educated, redirected, and, 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 and renewed our minds, hallelujah, to be truly transformed. Romans 8, verse 5 puts it like this. He said, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. But those who are living according to the spirit, set their minds on the things of the spirit, his will and his purpose. Hallelujah. I told you it's been over 15 years ago when I heard the message about purpose in your life that all of us been born for a specific purpose. And that drew me to the altar. And I got saved, hallelujah. I said, if God is a loving God, 
if he's a loving father like this man of God is saying. So I want to know my purpose. I'm sick and tired of just existing. So I want to get to know this man called Jesus. So he, so he said, set your, their minds on the things of the spirit, his will, his will, and his purpose. Paul here is dividing, hallelujah, people in two categories. Those who are dominated by their sinful nature and those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit. All of us will be in the first category. I know you didn't made it, you didn't arrive, but Pastor Charlene had it. He said, all of us will be in the first category. If Jesus Christ had not offered us a way out, hallelujah. If you believe it, say amen. Type amen, hallelujah. However, once we have said yes to Jesus, we, want to, we will want to continue following him because his way, his way brings life and peace. Beloved, Daily, we must consciously choose to center our lives on God. Some people might call you a fanatic, hallelujah. But I tell you, as you go from glory to glory to God with God, you become you will want to, you become more like him. Your mind will be renewed. Hallelujah. And you begin to be more kingdom-minded. So we must use the Bible to discover God's guidelines. And then follow him, hallelujah, in, our every, uh, in, in every perplexing situation. We should ask ourselves, what would Jesus want me to do? Hallelujah. No matter what. <laughs> I think back to my sister. She started a new job, and she had a challenging day. And she was telling me about it. And it, what she was saying, it was funny, but it wasn't funny, you know, what she went through. And she go into people's homes and she help them, older people. And she went through something. It was a perplexing situation. But she said, I just, Charlene, I just had to pray. Hallelujah. I had to keep praying and doing my job. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in every perplexing situation, we should ask ourselves. So she had to ask herself some questions. What would Jesus want me to do? <laughs> when the Holy Spirit points out, what God wants you to do, do it eagerly, hallelujah, because you realize that all of your help coming from the Lord. And I tell you, you're never alone. He's always with you. He said he'll never leave you or forsake you, hallelujah. Last, verse 3 of Romans 20 makes us aware that in order to obtain kingdom-minded thinking, hallelujah, which requires requires transformation of the mind through the word of God. We must not think more highly of ourselves than we are. In other words, humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. <laughs> Some people, you know, they don't want to humble themselves, but on this journey with God, we become humble. We become more like him. Romans 12 verse 3 refers to a man's or woman's self-esteem, and this and this is what he says, and I'm reading from the Amplified, Romans 12, verse 3. Hallelujah. It says, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability. Then he ought, he said, and of his importance and ability, then he ought to think. But to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has a, a portion, has a portion to each a degree of faith and a purpose. There it go again. There's that word again. And a purpose designed for service. Paul says that healthy self-esteem is important because some of us think too little of ourselves. On the other hand. Some of us overestimate ourselves. Paul says that honest and accurate self-evaluation, there you go again, that self-evaluation comes by knowing the basis of our self-worth, the basis of our self-worth, meaning our identity in Christ. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We can't even take it. Beloved, apart from him, we are not capable of very much by eternal by eternal standards, talking about kingdom-minded, 
He said, uh, 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 we are capable of very much by eternal standards. However, in him, we are valuable and capable of worthy service. Remember, I stated previously, if you've been listening, Jesus Christ was a wonderful example. He gave a wonderful example of giving God his rightful place in his heart. When we said, uh, when he said in verse 8 of Psalm 40, he said, I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my what? In my heart. Jesus Christ, as I told you, portrayed an attitude of obeying and serving. I don't know about you, beloved. I have a bad pastors on here, bishops on here. I don't know about you, but I believe that we grow in God. And as we are transformed by the renewing of our minds through the word of God, we become more like him. Hallelujah. And we want to serve. We want to give. And I know one pastor got on me. She said, Pastor Ollie, why every time I say I want to do something for you, well, don't, you know, don't take my blessing. I said, Lord, have mercy. let me hush. And I started laughing. Because that's what God does. He, we become more like him. We want to sow because we know. And she said one time, she said, and right after I sowed it, it came right back to me. And I know how that is. Hallelujah. So my sisters and my brothers, evaluating ourselves by the world standards of success and achievement can cause us to think too much about our worth in the eyes of others, which causes us to miss our true value in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. we, got, we, we can't think too highly of ourselves. God, he has us. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah. I have a question. Do you really believe that transformation is the key to the kingdom? If you believe it, say praise God. Because he gets all the glory. Hallelujah. To start the process of a renewed mind, you must accept him as Lord and Savior. I know I have a lot of, of pastors and bishops on here tonight, but if you're, if, if you're not born again, if someone is here not born again, I want to give you the best invitation that you'll ever get. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9 and 10, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He said, with the heart one believes, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, one believes that God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and me. Do you believe it? Confess it and believe it. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. After listening to this message, I want to get saved so I can go from glory to glory to glory. And I want to renew my mind and allow my mind to be transformed uh, uh, through the word of God that I become more like him, build a relationship with him. Hallelujah. If say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Come and live on the inside of me. I believe. After hearing this message, I want this. Welcome into the family of God. If you repeat it, that after me, and you receive it by faith. Hallelujah. It's a gift from God. No one can get the glory but him. He sent his only begotten son for you and for me. Hallelujah. If you've been walking on this journey for a while, Acts 3 verse 19 said, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing will come from the Lord. I tell you, say, Lord Jesus, I repent. I've allowed the pressures of life to get the best of me, but I repent. And I thank you for the opportunity. I believe Acts 3, verse 19. Whew. And I thank you for the, the time of refreshing that only can come from you. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome back into the family of God. I tell you, it's a little challenging for me at times. Hallelujah. As for some of you know, I've had surgery, brain surgery that had to go in and take out a tumor and then I had to go through radiation but I tell you I went through it with full of joy you know I had my times now I, I said God oh Lord help me father I would get tired but 
you know, God is the only one that can take you through things, and you'll be steadfast, unmovable, and the Holy Spirit would allow certain scripture to rise up during those times of saying, oh, God, God is a faithful God. There is no one like him. I thank God for your time tonight. Timothy Ekstrom, good to see you on. Lynette Jones, praise God. Good to see you, Lynette. Greg Boyd, it's an honor. Nicole Bradshaw, Pastor Nicole Bradshaw. We're going to pray for pa Bishop Bradshaw from uh, Faith Zone. Hallelujah. Uh, he had back surgery, and we want to keep him in prayer that he'll have a speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful woman of God, his wife. I just love her. She has a wonderful spirit. I thank God. I'm not just saying that, Pastor, because you're on tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I thank God for everyone, the one from Love and Faith, the one from Faith Zone, all of you on the churches that you go to, and Sister Brittany, Pastor Young for the Upper Room in Thomasville, North Carolina. Thank you so much. I tell you, awesome men and women of God, they teach the Word of God, and I sit back and I listen and I observe and I take it in, and we learn from one another. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to encourage you to build a relationship. Set aside a devotional time to spend time with him. Get quiet before him. Continuously renew your mind and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind through the word of God. God is a man that he cannot lie. His word would not return to us void, but it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish. I tell you, I'm glad that I... I've accepted him, and I'm glad to be a, a born again. Amen. I know you are. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to study your word with your people, God. Lord, continue to move in a mighty way on Bishop Bradshaw's life, God. Continue to move on his wife, God, and give them the strength that they need as they go through this process. Heal. Let, let them have a speedy recovery, as only you can. You said, by your stripes we were healed. Over 2,000 years ago, Lord, he had to go through this surgery, God. But I pray for a speedy recovery in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Continue to bless his wife, God. Give her the strength that she needs, as only you can, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we Pray for each and every one on this line, God. Whatever the need is, you promise that you will supply all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we know if we walked on this journey with you for a long time, we know that you're a man that you cannot lie. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. We can trust you, God, because you've shown us, God, to in your word, Proverbs 3, verse 5, God. You said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And you tell us as we go further in, down in that scripture that if we acknowledge you, you will direct our path, God. Lord, continue to remind us when we've given your word back to you, how you have been a man that you cannot lie. And your word did not return unto us void when we go through additional situations and circumstances in this life. That it would, we would encourage ourselves. You want us to renew our mind and mature in the things of God uh, spiritually. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, God. We ask, God, that you continue to look over our families, God. Oh, Father, we thank you for uh, being alive, being in the living of the, la the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Sister Gail, it's good to see you. Be blessed. Good night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.